The 2020s began with a lot of hardships when it comes to international trade. Both importers and exporters alike have been affected by increased freight costs, container shortages, and shipping delays. Many say that increased shipping rates will be the new normal, and container shortages will linger into 2022. In this video, we're giving you our take on the global shipping crisis. We'll go through the causes, alternatives, and take a look at a possible outcome. Coming up. Welcome to Global Trade Explained, a series of videos dedicated to providing useful information about importing and exporting goods internationally. Let's begin by analyzing the main reasons that caused the shipping crisis. The unprecedented reduction in international trade in the first few months of the pandemic disrupted the normal flow of goods on shipping lines. The pandemic also diminished the available workforce, both within the terminals and in support of functions such as truck drivers. This led to containers not being available at the right places at the right time, causing container shortages, vessel delays, and limitations to the volumes that could be loaded on ships. To get into more detail, let's see the reasons that caused all these container shortages. When importing goods from one country to another, a container would usually be dispatched by truck to the location where the goods are to be loaded. After the container is loaded with the goods, it would be trucked to the port of export, loaded on a cargo ship, and then sailed to the port of destination. After being unloaded off the vessel, the container would be trucked to its final destination, unloaded, and then head to another location where it is needed, loaded up with products again, and the cycle repeats itself. The change in trade patterns and the lack of truck drivers has caused many containers to be stuck inland in many locations, unable to reach the locations where they are needed. Also due to pandemic restrictions, many ports are lacking the available workforce to be able to unload ships at a normal pace. So many ships are stuck off the coast waiting to dock and unload cargo. 70 cargo ships are waiting to get into the LA and Long Beach ports and the shipments are carrying everything from furniture and electronics to holiday toys. Well, officials say the delay is partly because there is a shortage of trucks and drivers to pick up the goods. The Port of L.A. director says shipping traffic is also up 50 percent from pre-pandemic levels. This is further contributing to the container shortage and increasing the costs of cargo carriers that in turn charge higher rates to recover their losses. But still, what is the full reason for the record high shipping rates carriers charge these days? Shipping prices to many destinations are currently at about four or five times what they usually were during high seasons in previous years. This is especially valid for shipments from Asia to Europe or the American continent, which are some of the busiest shipping lines in the world. The unpredictable development of the pandemic led to congested ports, ships waiting to dock, delays in schedules, which increased cost burdens for carriers. As in any other industry, high demand and low supply leads to price hikes. Every year there are high and low seasons in the global shipping industry. Prices usually drop during low season and rise toward the end of the year when it's high season and most companies are rushing to get their products shipped before Christmas or Chinese New Year. But 2021 was a year of shortages. Major disruptions to supply chains have caused companies to run out of essential materials or products to run their businesses. So as many are trying to get back to normal, the demand for shipping containers is also high. Tight shipping capacity is also another reason that could be attributed to the record shipping rates. Let's not forget that at the start of the pandemic, a lot of carriers have sent some of their ships to scrapyards. In many cases, these ships were retired sooner than originally intended, so their companies could cope with financial burdens caused by the pandemic. Coupled with the low availability of containers, this is also another reason that caused shipping prices to rise. At least, this is the official narrative. Some people are saying cargo carriers are charging these ridiculous rates just because they can. Others are also suspecting that the reasons might be political. Since the U.S. and other countries are in an ongoing trade war with China and vice versa, these price increases might actually be incentivized by some governments to get companies to rethink their supply chains. But we believe this is highly unlikely, and limited capacity and high demand are the most logical causes for the shipping crisis. So you might say, okay, this explains the high rates for ocean freight, but what explains the price increases for air cargo? If you've been working in the import-export business for a while, we're sure you know that air cargo rates are also at their highest levels. Again, this is valid especially for shipments from Asia, where most consumer goods or electronics are manufactured. First of all, uncertain delivery times and high rates for sea shipments has put pressure on shippers to opt for air transport. Second of all, travel restrictions and reduced passenger flights are causing a capacity shortage. You might think, what do passenger flights have to do with cargo? Well, 
Don't think that when you get on a flight, only your luggage goes in the cargo hold. Airlines also use the remaining space for transporting cargo. Although there are regular cargo flights, the demand is so high that prices have nowhere to go but up. But even so, pandemic prevention measures and sudden outbursts have also caused disruptions to flight schedules and cargo delays. For example, in August 2021, new cases of the virus have diverted flights to Shanghai Airport in China. The China-Europe Rail Link has been another alternative for cargo from China bound for the European Union. China Railway Express, a key rail project under China's Belt and Road Initiative, has seen a record rise in demand amid challenged air and ocean freight markets. But if you are an importer from Europe in need of products or materials from China and think that this might be the solution to your problem, don't be too happy yet. Rail transport is also subject to delays and price rises, because to put it frankly, the system is overloaded. China to Europe rail traffic has exceeded the volume planned in 2018, stressing the limited system. As of September 2021, delays in border crossings and congested European railways have caused rail operators to limit or cut services to Europe. Meanwhile, expansion projects at key European rail gateways are also having an impact on available capacity. On top of the rail hub delays, available containers are also in extreme short supply in China. If you found this content useful so far, we would appreciate it if you'd click the like button to help us create more videos like this. And if you haven't yet, please subscribe to the Texan Industries channel to be up to date with all of the content we post. So we've been talking about all the difficulties the global trade and logistics system is facing. But what does the future look like? What makes many think that things won't return to normal anytime soon? As we said throughout the video, as opposed to the start of the pandemic, fierce competition for container capacity is now the new normal, so freight rates aren't expected to go down anytime soon. Problems that have built up from the beginning of the pandemic have caused trade imbalances that are far from resolved. With countries locking down and opening up at different times, sudden outbursts of new cases happening occasionally, there's no certainty when things will start coming back to normal or what the new normal will be. As economies are starting to recover, demand will also keep rising as inventories are rebuilt across supply chains. For most consumer products, there are few alternatives to ocean freight. For higher-value products, alternative modes of transportation would be an option, like air freight or the Silk Road train link for the EU. But as we said earlier, these methods are also over capacity, and either way, importers are seeing significant increases to their sourcing costs. This means that consumers may start to feel the impacts through price increases, which may also affect the economy overall. An unbalanced recovery throughout 2021, port congestion, and unavailable workforce will keep creating delays. However, container liners have enjoyed outstanding financial results since the pandemic, and new orders for container ships has reached a record of 229 vessels, with a capacity of 2.2 million containers measured in 20-foot equivalent units. This new capacity won't be ready for use until 2023, and will represent a 6% increase after years of low deliveries. This will put downward pressure on shipping costs, but many analysts say it's highly unlikely for shipping rates to return to their pre-pandemic levels. And in our own opinion, we do believe this might be the case, unless demand drops to levels lower than they've ever been in 20 years. We'd like to hear your opinion on the global shipping crisis, so please let us know in the comments below. As always, thanks for watching, and see you next time.